Welcome to the ASCO eLearning Weekly Podcast, a weekly educational series focused on helping learners identify knowledge gaps and stay up to date with the latest in new drug developments, cancer treatments, and patient care approaches. This episode is complementary to an education session presented at the 2019 annual meeting. For more detailed information about the education session, make sure to check the episode description for links to ASCO's meeting library. Hello, my name is Alessandro Fichera, and I'm the chief of the Division of Gastrointestinal Surgery at the University of North Carolina Medical Center in Chapel Hill. Today, we compare the clinical scenarios of two patients with locally advanced rectal cancer that have achieved complete clinical response after neoadjuvant combined modality treatment and have been offered or have requested a watch and wait approach. While these two cases have several similarities, the indication for more conservative management in these cases are quite different. Let us look at the cases. The first patient is Jacob, a mobile obese 44-year-old man with a BMI of 45 and a T3 and 0 rectal cancer by MRI involved in the sphincter complex and located anteriorly. His past medical history is what makes this case interesting. As he was undergoing routine assessment for weight reduction surgery, he was found to have penile cancer. He underwent radical penectomy with bilateral inguinal lymphonode dissection resulting in significant lymph lymphedema of the lower extremities. Eventually, three years after the diagnosis of penile cancer, he underwent a colonoscopy following an episode of bright red blood per rectum, and his rectal cancer was diagnosed. His metastatic workup by a CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis was negative, and his CAA was within normal limits. On initial evaluation, it was clear that a sphincter-preserving operation was a very unlikely possibility given the location of the lesion, the patient comorbidities, and body habitus. The possibility of a watch-and-wait approach was discussed at tumor board and subsequently with the patient. We decided to start with induction chemotherapy, and he received eight cycles of Folfox as part of a total neoadjuvant therapy approach. He then underwent restaging, including CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, pelvic MRI with rectal cancer protocol and a flexible sigmoidoscopy, all showing excellent clinical response. He then started standard long-course radiation with Zeloda. Six weeks after the completion of treatment, he was found to have a clinical complete response and was enrolled in our surveillance protocol. The second patient is David, an otherwise healthy 53-year-old physician found to have a T3N1 low rectal cancer on an MRI located posteriorly at approximately 4 cm from the anal verge. He personally reviewed the literature and presented to us inquiring about watch and weight management. On exam, it appeared that with a good clinical response, a sphincter-saving procedure could have been feasible, but he was concerned about postoperative defecatory, urinary, and sexual function. In this case, we started with a standard long-course radiation and Zeloda chemotherapy, with a mutual agreement to assess response before committing to a watch and wait approach. Six weeks after completion of treatment, he underwent restaging by CT, chest, abdomen, and pelvic, pelvic MRI with rectal cancer protocol and a flexible sigmoidoscopy, and was found to have an excellent clinical response. After extensive discussion of the pros and cons, we agreed to proceed with consolidation chemotherapy with eight cycles of Folfox as part of a total neoadjuvant treatment. At restaging, he was found to have a clinical complete response and was enrolled in our routine surveillance protocol. These two cases illustrate different approaches to non-operative management of locally advanced low rectal cancer. Jacob was clearly not a good candidate for a radical resection. We decided to start with induction chemotherapy in order to avoid a long interval between radiation and surgery with the resulting potential pelvic fibrosis in case of an incomplete response. The case of David is definitely more complex from a shared decision perspective. While it is important to respect the wishes of the patient, especially when educated and well-informed, this is a healthy individual that would do well with a radical, minimal invasive resection and very likely will be a candidate for a sphincter-preserving operation. In this case, we did not commit to a non-operative management approach from the beginning after extensive discussion with the patient. We started with long-course radiation with the intent of making the final decision based on the response to therapy. These two cases bring up several questions and interesting takeaway points. 
Do we have enough evidence to routinely offer non-operative management to patients with locally advanced low rectal cancer? Is there a need for total neoadjuvant treatment? And what is the preferred sequence of treatment modalities? How should we assess response and survey the patients that show a complete response? The concept of non-operative management for rectal cancer was initially introduced by Dr. Angelita Abragama and her group from Brazil. In one of their most recent publications, in Annals of Surgery in 2004, this group reported on 265 patients with rectal cancer considered resectable who were treated with neoadjuvant chemo radiation. A total of 71 patients who had a complete clinical response were observed. 194 patients with incomplete clinical response underwent radical surgery, and 22 of them were found to have a complete pathologic response and were used for comparison. Two patients in the observation group developed local recurrence versus known in the resection group. The three patients in both groups developed distal metastasis. Disease-free survival was not significantly different between the groups. The Memorial Sloan Catering Group published their retrospective experience with 32 patients selectively treated with non-operative management by agreement between patient and treating physicians and compared them with 57 pathologic complete responders after resection. They found a regrowth rate of 21%, all treated with radical surgery, and three patients in both groups developed distant metastasis. The time was right for a definitive prospective randomized trial to answer these very important questions. The OPRA, Organ Preservation in Rectal Adderocarcinoma, a phase 2 multi-center randomized trial that recently reached a cruel target, was designed to evaluate 3 years disease-free survival in patients with locally advanced rectal cancer, treated with chemoradiation plus induction or consolidation chemotherapy and total mesorectal excision or non-operative management. The results of this study will help us understand the real value of non-operative management, the type of patient that could potentially avoid surgery, and the preferred treatment algorithm. The design of the organ preservation trial built on the results of the Timing of Rectal Cancer Response to Chemo Radiation Therapy trial published on Lancet Oncology in 2015 by Julio Garcia Aguiar et al. In this study, patients with stage 2 and 3 rectal cancer received incremental cycles of systemic full fox chemotherapy as consolidation from two cycles in group 2 to six cycles in group 4, and they were compared to group 1 of standard long-course radiation therapy. The pathologic complete response rate went from 18% in group 1 to 38% in group 4. Based on this data, and also considering the difficulty in accurately assessing complete clinical response, Total neoadjuvant treatment should be considered and recommended when enrolling patients in non-operative management. How to sequence treatment modalities is still left to the judgment of the multidisciplinary team as it was shown in the two clinical scenarios presented until more compelling data will be available. The issue of assessment of response and surveillance remains controversial as the accuracy of currently available imaging modality is less than ideal, especially after neoadjuvant treatment. It is mandatory that the entire team, medical and radiation oncologists, surgeon, endoscopist, and radiologist, as well as the patients, remain engaged in the follow-up, as not a single modality would be sufficiently accurate. In the OPERA trial, the follow-up modalities and frequency, as well as the need for confirmatory post-treatment biopsies, were left to the investigator's discretion. The importance of a thorough digital rectal exam performed by an experienced hand should not be underestimated in addition to endoscopic and imaging modalities. A systematic review on this topic, published by Datani et al. on Annals of Surgery in 2018, reported a 22.1 local regrowth rate with 26% of the cases in the first three years, supporting the value of more intense surveillance during the first two to three years after completion of treatment. Lastly, a word of caution has come from more recent studies. Smith et al. published the Memorial Sloan Catering updated experience in JAM Oncology in 2019. They noted that 22 of the 13 patients with a clinical complete response developed a local regrowth, 20% rate similar to their initial experience, but that was associated with a 36% incidence of distant metastasis in these patients, significantly higher than the patients that did not experience a regrowth, 
or that had had a pathologic complete response. A recent systematic review and meta-analysis published by Dossa et al. in Lancet Gastroenterology and Hepatology in 2017 showed a lower regrowth rate of 15.1%, but a significantly worse disease-free survival in the watch and wait group compared to the resection group. Clearly, the jury is still out. In summary, based on the current evidence, total mesorectal excision after neoadjuvant combined modality therapy remains the standard of care for patients with stage 2 and 3 rectal cancer, as level 1 evidence to inequivocally support non-operative management is still lacking. A watch-and-wait approach, other than in the context of a clinical trial, may be considered an option in patients that are poor surgical candidates, refuse a permanent colostomy or surgery altogether, with a clear understanding that approximately 20% of patients will experience a local regrowth, often associated with distant metastasis. A total neoadjuvant treatment approach is indicated in these cases to maximize the true complete response rate. The complex and multifaceted decision to pursue non-operative management should only be reached in the context of a multidisciplinary team discussion as the follow-up for these patients is quite intensive and requires participation of the entire team and the patient should be considered part of the team. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the ASCO e-learning weekly podcast. For more information on the watch and wait approach to locally advanced rectal cancer, including additional patient cases and opportunity for self-evaluation, visit the comprehensive e-learning center at elearning.asco.org. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the ASCO e-learning weekly podcast. To make us part of your weekly routine, click subscribe. Let us know what you think by leaving a review. For more information, visit the Comprehensive eLearning Center at elearning.asco.org. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. This is not a substitute for medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.